Hey everybody, this is Captain Yeet here for you for another Avatar The Last Admitter episode review. This is going to be episode 7 titled Zuko Alone. So let's get into it. So the episode starts off with Zuko walking on his. Now they do actually confirm what this name of this animal is. I think the little boy called it an owl horse. If not, oh no, a crow horse. And he says it later on in the episode, so I'll get the actual name. But we do get the name of this weird horse thing that Zuko's riding on. Anyway, he's walking on it through like this desert type place. Walking, walking, he goes over a bridge. The bridge almost collapsed. He's walking some more, and he gets really hungry, and, he de and he's dehydrated. He's been walking for so long, the horse thing. He's been walking for so long, and he has no food, and he has no water. Well, he has a little bit of water. And then he sees a man cooking some meat over some fire. And he goes to take out his blade to attack him to steal his food. But then the man gets up, walks over to a tree, and there's a pregnant woman at the tree, and he starts to rub her belly. So obviously the food is for him and his wife, who's pregnant. And Zuko sees this, and he goes, and he puts his blade back in the seat and keeps on walking. He continues to walk, and then obviously he starts to like fade in and out. Like he's starting to pass out because he's so thirsty and he's so hungry. And then he closes his eyes fully, and he sees a picture or an image of his mom. And his mom's name is Azura. And we see a good, and like we see, like we get like two or three flashbacks in this episode, so there's a better shot of her. But her name is Azura. I forget that, and obviously his dad's name is Ozai. So he sees the image of her, and he keeps on walking until eventually he finds his little village. He goes into the village, and we see these Earth Kingdom soldiers playing some dice, and they look at Zuko. And Zuko looks at them. And then Zuko just goes over to this little, not bar, but the little, I don't know, I guess a store. Yeah, this little store. And he only has two coins. He said he wants a hot meal, two bag of feed for his horse, and some something to drink. He says, well, you don't have enough for a hot meal, but I can give you some money for two bags of feed for your horse thing there. Okay? So Zuko's waiting, and then these two little kids come out of nowhere and throws an egg at the soldiers. My bad, hold up. <laughs> I was uh, losing my breath there. Anyway, um, these two little kids come out of nowhere, and one of them throws an egg at the soldiers. And the soldiers get up and start yelling at Zuko. They're like, did you throw that egg? No. Did you see who did? No. It's your favorite word, no, or something? You had to see where that egg came from. I don't know. Maybe a chicken flew over. <laughs> he said, look, you might want to get out of town. You don't take too nicely to trespassers. And the main guy talking to him packs his side, and on the side is these two giant hammers. They look basically like Mjolnir hammers, you know what I'm saying? They basically look like Mjolnir hammers, and he packs it. And then the guy comes out with Zuko's two bags of feed and puts it on the table, and the soldier grabs it and yanks it away. He said, thank you for your crap, Christ. Thank you for your contribution to the, to the cause, and walks away. And the guy says that those soldiers are supposed to be here to protect us from the Fire Nation. But they're just big bullies. They just terrorize this town. I mean, that's that's kind of messed up. You know, basically, what, you know, what, what he just said, you know, they were sent here to protect this town from the Fire Nation. But six, you know, they were like, hey, man, we're the protectors. I got to do whatever we say. You know, they're they just punks. <laughs> they, are, they are punks, man. <laughs> Ridiculous. So we'll get back on this. Actually, oh, yeah, the kid says it right here. I forget the actual name of it, too. He was like, you know, thanks for not writing me out. Um... Do you need anything? He was like, no. He said, come on, I'll bring, bring you back to my house and I can feed you an owl horse thing. It's the least I could do for you, for you not writing me out. And this is the actual name of it. He's finna say right here. Uh, oh, ostrich horse. That's the, okay, that's the, it's an ostrich horse. I kept saying owl horse, but that's the name of it. And here's a picture, not a picture, but here's a, here's a image of a little boy and his mom and dad. And when they get to their little hut outside of town, there's these weird sheep pig hybrid that keep oinking as soon as they walk up and the little kid is like well no one can sneak up on us i mean no one can sneak up on us because as soon as someone comes they start oinking like crazy so like, yeah i see <laughs> like, yeah these things are going stupid <laughs> oinking like crazy see well we see one somewhat normal pig and then we see a sheep pig so i guess they got both kinds here but then we see the image of the boy's mom and dad and the boy, too. And let me uh, <clears throat> move the camera around so it's kind of it's gonna hard with this table. Oh, see a rooster pig, too. Here's the boy's dad, and here's the boy's mom. This is the dad. Then we see the boy, too. That's the little boy, and then his mom's going to come up, too, and that's what they look like. And obviously he's telling his dad that, you know, he stood up, he stood up to the soldiers. He helped me out. He didn't rat me out. And he was like, well, 
Anybody that can stand up to the soldiers can stay here. The mom goes, hey, are you hungry? I'm making some food right now. Hugo goes, no, I'm good. I got to get going. She goes, well, my husband needs some help working on the barn. How about you go help him work on the barn for a few hours, and then dinner will be ready soon, and then you can come eat with us. So Hugo goes, all right. <laughs> you know, all right. But, you know, he obviously is hungry. He didn't want to intrude, but, you know, she was kind of pushing it. So, you know, all right, fine. You know, I'll help you guys out. And I, I, I guess I can stay to eat supper for a little while. Doesn't seem too bad. They cut to them working on the roof of the barn, and Zuko, he's not too good at working on stuff because the nails, he keeps bending them. And the son just keeps asking them question after question. Like, hey, uh, where you come from? Far away. Where you going? Far. Hey, how you get that scar? And, it's, and the father's like, look, son, stop asking a man personal questions. A man past is his own business. So please just stop, like, you know, just stop asking the man questions. He goes, all right, yes, sir. And then Zuko closes his eyes, and we see a flashback. When Zuko was a little kid, and they were hanging out. So it cuts to Zuko and his mom chilling next to a pond with these little turtle ducks, who look really cute. And this part was so, my first time watching this, I remember I was bawling out laughing. I still chuckled. I even chuckled right before I watched, I mean, right before I recorded, I was watching the episode. I chuckled. Because, <laughs> was, I mean, um, Zuko's mom and Zuko are feeding the turtle ducks. And Zuko says, hey, mom. You want to see how Zula feeds the turtle ducks? And he just chucks this big chunk of bread at the turtle ducks. And he, <laughs> he just chucks it at it. And the mom's like, why'd you do that? And then the mom turtle duck gets mad, runs over to Zuko, and bites him on the leg. He's like, ah, what the heck? And then the mom grabs the mom turtle duck, puts it back in the pond. He's like, why would that stupid turtle duck do that for? It's a mom, Zuko. If any, if any excuse me, if anybody ever mess with my kids, I'll snap him up and she, she starts to hug Zuko but that that one scene man I don't know why it was so funny to me <laughs> the way he just the way he just chucked that piece of bread at him look at this hey mom you wanna see how Zuma feeds the turtle ducks yeah <laughs> he just dunks it into the water but we see little kid Zuko and this is what a turtle duck looks like there's a normal duck with a turtle shell this is pretty cool and this is Zuko's mom Ursa I just, I always wonder, like, how in the world did Lord Ozai get such a nice, kind woman to be his wife? Now, maybe it wasn't like, and here we go. That's his mom. I always wonder, like, how did he get such a nice and kind woman to be his wife and had kids with him? Maybe he was different when he was younger and he was nicer. Or maybe, they never, I don't know, they do say it later on in the series. Maybe it was like an arranged marriage. Maybe, I don't know. So he, it, was, it had to be a Rang's marriage, or maybe a Lord Ozai was actually a pretty cool, nice guy back in the day when they were younger. It has to be one of those two things, because there's no way he acts the way he acts now, and she was like, oh yeah, I love you. Like, there's, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way, so it had to be something different. Then we cut to Azula, May, and Azula, May, and Ty Lee, um, all joking around. May is just sitting down under a tree, just chilling. Azula and Ty Lee are doing cartwheels. Azula messes up and falls on the ground. Ty Lee does like three backflips in the air, lands it, and then as soon as he lands it, Azula pushes her over. And she's like, what the heck, man? And then Azula sees her mom and Zuko walking past. And she looks at May, blushing, because she likes him. You know, she goes, hmm. Ty Lee, watch this. She goes over to her mom. This is a good shot of, well, can I get a, are they in this shot? Actually, cause this is this is little kid Azula, Tylee, and May. Okay, here we go. We're gonna see uh, May in a second. This is her pushing her over for no reason. But this is little kid May, and that is little kid Tylee. That's, that's little kid Zuko. Uh, we're gonna see Tylee in a second. Here we go. That's little kid Tylee. So uh, the screen's kind of bright, so you don't really get to see him too well. Uh, well, this is a better shot of Azula as a little kid. See, this is Azula. Anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. I gotta get this focused. That's better. <laughs> okay, my bad. I just gotta focus this around. Azula goes up to her mom and says, Hey, can you make Zuko play with us? He says, I'm not gonna cartwheel with you guys. She goes, nah, nah, it's not cartwheeling. Cartwheeling's not even a game, dum-dum. Come on, isn't it good for a brother and a sister to play together? And mom goes, you know what? 
Zula's got it right. It's good for you guys to play together and bond. So go ahead, go play with them just for a little while. Okay. And here's the game. Azula takes an apple off a tree, puts it on Mane's head. And the goal of the game is to get the apple off of the person's head, like this. And Azula firebends some fire on the apple, and the apple's on fire. But it didn't come off her head, so the apple's on fire on Mane's head. Azula runs over it to knock it off. But then he trips, falls on her, and they both fall into the fountain. And then they go, oh, look, they're so cute together. And Mane starts to blush, and she gets mad. And Azula says, this was dumb, I knew it, and walks away. And then at that same time, the mother comes back. She says, hey, Zuko, I was coming to get you. Uh, why are you soaking wet? Girls are crazy. And she just keeps walking. <laughs> he just keeps walking. <laughs> Zuko was not happy. <laughs> he just keeps walking. And then um, Zuko's mom reads a scroll that Uncle Iroh wrote. Because at this moment, because we heard that he lost the Battle of Bossing Say. When they were reading the scroll, he's literally at the battle right now when they were kids at the Battle of Boston. So, and he's writing down about how they broke down the outer wall they're going in right now. Hopefully, you guys will be able to see it if we don't burn it down to the ground. Loves and wishes Uncle Iroh. And he also gave Zuko and Azula two gifts. Oh, well, you know, one gift for each of them. He gave Zuko a dagger made by the Earth Kingdom, by the finest Earth Kingdom blacksmiths. And there's an inscription on the dagger that says, never give up about a fight. And then Azula gave her a doll. But Azula, see that girly girly, so he doesn't really like the doll. And Uncle Arrow, he looks the exact same. The only difference is he has brown hair because, you know, he was younger. And now that he's older, he has white hair. But, I mean, well, white, gray hair, same thing. But, you know, he just, he just looks the exact same. I guess I'll show it to y'all. I mean, I guess y'all want to see young Uncle Arrow. I mean, he literally has the same balls on and everything. He's the exact same. He just has gray hair now. I mean, white. I mean, yeah, brown hair. But you can't really see it too well, huh? Not bad. <laughs> you, see it, you can't see it too good in this panel. Let me cut <clears throat> back here. Oh, okay. I don't have to move the TV, thank goodness. Because before I had them, like, bending. So, but this, this spot is good. <laughs> this spot is good. The scene cuts back to real time, and Zuko is asleep in a barn. And a little kid, Lee, comes into the barn, grabs Zuko's swords, and leaves. But Zuko was awake the whole time. He just lets him take it. Then the cuts to him inside the flower. That's sort of like flower field. The little boy is like, you know, with both of the daggers, like swinging them around, cutting the flowers up, stabbing a tree. And Zuko says, you're using them wrong. And the boy falls over. The boy gives the blades to Zuko. He says, you're thinking of these two swords as two separate things. But they're not. These are dual swords. They're one sword but in two different parts. So think of them as one being. And Zuko does some cool sword moves and cuts the flowers, gives them back to the boy. The boy actually does a cool jump and slice move. He says, yeah, you know, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, there you go. And then she goes, man, I think you really like my brother. He teaches me stuff like that all the time. But he wanted to go fight in the war a while ago. And Zuko, every time, you know, someone makes it to war, he looks down because though there's only really a war because of his dad. And he kind of, you know, he meets nice people out here. As getting affected by the war, so it sucks. <laughs> it really sucks. Then it cuts to daytime. <clears throat> Excuse me. It cuts to daytime, and Zuko's finna leave. But as soon as he's finna leave, those Earth Kingdom soldiers start coming in to their little, uh, not village, their little house. Nah. <laughs> their little house, the little farmhouse. And then the dad's like, What do you think they want? Trouble. So they come up and they say, Hey, man, we just wanted you to, we just want to let you know the son of a tomb been captured. Hey, guys, what did they do with the last platoon that got captured? The way I heard it, they dressed them up in fire nation costumes unarmed and put them right on the front lines. And obviously, the, the father doesn't want to hear this, but his son possibly going to get killed now that he get captured. So he said, man, watch your mouth. The Earth Kingdom soldier gets mad that he's talking back, so he starts to walk up on him. But Zuko, you know, he intervenes. He says, man, you know what? Why are we even talking to these clowns? That's like, that, that just rubbing the mud with pigs. And they walk away. And then the dad mentions that <laughs> it's it's kind of funny, but it's kind of messed up too. Because as soon as the Earth Kingdom soldiers leave, the dad says that I'm going to no, join the war, find our son, and bring him back home. And obviously the wife is crying because now, you know, the, her, their, her son is gone, possibly could get killed. Now her husband's going to leave. He could possibly get killed too in this war. So the husband's like, you know, I'm going to go leave and find our son. The little boy looks at Zuko and says, hey, when my dad is gone, are you going to stay? Zuko goes, no. And he just walks, he just walks away. 
I mean, it's, it's supposed to be a sad scene. It's just how funny. It's just, it's just a little funny how, like, you know, the boy, he, like, finna ball out crying. He's like, hey, when my dad leaves, are you gonna stay? No. <laughs> he just, he just go. <laughs> he just walks off. <gasps> oh, my goodness. <laughs> anyway, we cut right back to the flashback, and Zuko's playing around with his dagger trying to practice. And Azula says that Uncle Iro is a quitter. He says, what are you talking about? No, he's not. He says, yes, he is. His son. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm so glad I completely forgot about that big chunk of the flashback where she was reading what when um when uh Zuko's mom was reading the scroll that Uncle Iro sent. Azula, kept, Azula just kept talking like, you know, our dad would make a much better fire lord than Uncle Iro would. So if he dies in this war... Wouldn't that mean our dad becomes a fire lord? Obviously, the mom's like, well, don't talk like that. Like, what the heck is wrong with you? Why would you want your grand? Oh, no, I mean, not your grandfather. Why would you want your uncle to die like that? He is a nice man. Don't talk like that. She was like, what? Our dad would be much more suited to be fire lord. Come on, you know that. And Nazuka was like, what would you, would you want cousin? Ah, oh, I forget. What, he's talking about, you know, Uncle Iroh's son. Would you want our cousin to die, too? I mean, if it gives our family up. Like, obviously, the mom was like, look, stop. Not another word. Like, you know, you're, you're wilding out. It comes back to here. And she calls Uncle Ira a quitter. And Zuko's like, what are you talking about? And he was, and she was like, you know, after his son died in Ba Sing Se in the war, he fell apart. And now he's coming home. He couldn't finish his mission. A real general will stay there no matter what and finish the job. Zuko's like, you are sick, Azula. Like, he lost his only son. He's probably just sad that he lost his son forever. His only child. And then Azula's mom, I mean, Azula and Zuko's mom comes in, and she goes, um, Grant, well, she says, Fire Lord Azulon wants to see us, so put on your best clothes right now. And Azula goes, why don't we just call him Grandfather? I mean, that's what he is. I mean, he's not as young as he used to be, so he's not as prevalent. I mean, he's not as young as he used to be, so he's not as powerful as he used to be as the Fire Lord. Azula, stop. <laughs> like, you know, what is, like, what is wrong with you? It's supposed to be respect. So they put on their best clothes, and they go to see their grandfather, Uncle o Uncle Azulon. Uncle, I mean, Grandfather Azulon, not Uncle Azulon. Grandfather Azulon. But they're calling him Philo Azulon. He's the Philo right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I keep messing it up. Anyway, Uncle, I mean, <clears throat> Old Ozai asked Zuko a question. And he was like, how did the Fire Nation beat the village of whatever? And Zuko can't really remember it but Azula remembers it like that about how there was like a famine the soldiers were like dehydrated so the fire nation was able to burn all their crops and kill them all within an instant and she smiles and then he goes see uh, Azula is like you know my kids are really smart and then he goes Azula so uh, grandfather the new moves you've been showing me and Azula gets up she does some cool flips and oh the whole episode just cut off <laughs> I didn't notice that my bad <laughs> the whole episode just cut let me get to our words. I wasn't done. Okay, here we go. Um, Azula gets up, does some flips and kicks and some new cool fire moves, right? And as soon as he does that, Ozai starts to smile. And then she sits down, and Azula whispers into Zuko's ear, you'll never be as uh, good as me, or you'll never catch up. And obviously, Zuko gets kind of mad. So Zuko stands up. He goes, I want to show you what I've been learning. And then his smile instantly turned to a frown. Zuko does the same thing Azula's doing, but that is good. Every time she does like a flip, a cool kick or whatever, Zuko does the kick, but then he falls over. He does do some, a little bit of cool fire moves, but he just keeps falling over. He goes, ah, oh, I failed. And the mom comes over. She goes, no, Zuko, you're okay. I love watching you. I love watching you do that. And then the grandfather says, why am I watching this pump? I don't know what that's supposed to mean. I guess punk. <laughs> he, but he said pump, P-U-M-P. So I don't know, but he's like, why am I watching this? Everybody else leave. I just want to talk to my son. Everybody does leave except for Azula and Zuko. Because Azula grabs Zuko and hide behind a curtain. And basically, I think, they don't find out say it, but I think Ozai kills his father. Because Ozai does ask his father, basically, you know, Uncle Iroh lost his son. So he doesn't have an heir to the throne anymore. And who knows when, who knows when he's going to come back to the Fire Nation. Because, you know, obviously the death is his son. So, I'm right here, father. Let me, you know, betray uh, Iroh, your firstborn, my older brother, and let me become Fire Lord, you know? Because I have children. You saw them. I have heirs to the throne. 
Iroh doesn't, so I should become the next Fire Lord. Obviously, the dad gets mad. Like, you want me to betray my own son, the first born, the right to the throne? How dare you? Your insolence will not be, uh, not like, basically, he was like, you know, <laughs> you are not going to get away from this from trying to speak treason right into my face. And a bunch of fire starts to engulf the room. And Zuko gets really scared, so he runs out. But Azula just stays there. And then later on, we find out that the grandfather died. And then the dude says that we're going to respect his wishes to make Ozai the next Fire Lord. I'm like, no. Like, what? Like, because, like, I was thinking maybe they fought each other and he beat him. And maybe he get, like, got respect. But, no, he was, like, really mad that he would even speak about betraying Iroh like that. So, I'm thinking he killed his dad. They don't flat out say it this episode. But, I, I'm like, I'm saying, like, as soon as they said we're going to respect his wishes and make you the next Fire Lord, I was like, oh, no, he killed him. <laughs> he killed dad to kill him. Like, what? What? Like, no, nah, I, I, I think Ozai killed his dad. This is hardcore. That's that's jacked up. I mean, I'm like, geez, I, I think he killed his dad. I really think. Oh, that's right. This is probably like the only time we're going to see him, huh? So this is what that grandfather looks like, the fire level before Ozai. There might be like another flashback or so. I don't know, but this is what the grandfather looks like. I kind of forgot. I was really going to skip past this. But wait, you probably do need to see this, huh? <laughs> you probably do need to uh, look at this guy. So the next scene cuts to Zuko sleeping in his bed. Azula comes in and wakes him up. And Azula says that um, dad is going to kill you. Obviously, Zuko's like, man, shut up. You're just lying to me. No, I'm serious. He says that since you want to try to betray, uh, since you want to betray your brother, because of the loss of his son, you should feel the same pain as he does of your firstborn. So I think Zuko's older than Azula. But I think they're like, I think it's only by like one year. I don't think it's like, you know, five year difference. I think it's like either like one year difference between Azula and Zuko. But Zuko was born first, then it was Azula. So obviously, Zuko, I mean, she just keeps hyping up the idea that their dad is going to kill <laughs> kill his son. And Zuko's starting to freak out a little bit, but it's also he's like, no, she's lying. She's lying. And the mom comes in. She's like, she's lying about what? What's the problem? Nothing? I don't know. And then she grabs Azula. We're going to need to talk. And walk out of the room. I mean, that's just, I mean, oh, I mean, as a kid, obviously, you know, we used to play prank. Me and my sister used to play prank. I'm like, oh, yeah, mom's mad at you or whatever. But that was like, oh, yeah, mom's going to kill <laughs> Mom's going to kill you. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Azula, man. She is just ridiculous. <laughs> Azula. Azula. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Azula Azula's ridiculous, man. <laughs> Azula. Anyway, right after that, we cut to, I mean, I mean, my bad. Like, as soon as um, Zuko's mom takes Azula out the room, Zuko lays down in bed and says, Azula always lies. Azula always lies. And then we cut to Zuko now laying in a field of grass saying the same thing. Azula always lies. Azula always lies. And then he wakes up to a little kid mom coming in. And she says that Lee took a dagger into town and tried to attack the Earth and the kingdoms. And now they're going to take him into the army to join. I mean, now they're going to make him join the army. Because they said if he's old enough to fight, he's old enough to join the army. And obviously the mom is really sad. So like, please, I, you know, we just met you, but can you please get our son back? And so like, obviously, yeah, I'll get your son back. And then he goes into town. And then they do fight. Well, there's like, yeah, there's three guys with spears. And there's the main guy with the hammers. So Zogo takes out the three guys with spears easy. I mean, like, it wasn't even, it wasn't even a contest. He, like, hits them once, and either they get knocked out or they run away. And now the last guy they have to fight is the guy with the hammers. And Zuko does, like, it, it's pretty cool speaking with Zuko. You know, the Zuko's like, I know what you guys are. You're not soldiers. You're bullies. You abuse your power, mostly on women and children. And you're punks that can't even fight in the real war, so you just come here to protect this town. But you're just trying to rule it over just like the final Lord, you, you guys are chumps. Like, you know, you guys are chumps. Obviously, they get mad, and they all start to fight. And like I said, Zuko takes out the three guys with spears. Easy. So now it's just the big guy with the two, like, millionaire hammers, basically. And Zuko brings out both his blades to fight him. And it's somewhat of an even fight, but then it's just kind of hard. Because Zuko, he keeps, like, because the guy keeps hitting the ground and throwing rocks at Zuko. Zuko does, like, break the rocks over and over again. But eventually, you know, these giant rocks are overwhelming him so every like few rocks he destroys it's like one big one that hits him in the chest or knocks him over and he gets up but he's still like hitting them and there's this old guy in the because like the whole the whole city is like not the whole city the whole village is watching this fight and there's this one old guy that's like give him my left give him my left 
And this old woman is like, it's not a fist fight. Yeah, but he got a left sword, don't he? <laughs> so dumb. So they continue to fight until eventually the guy with the two hammer jumps in the air, slams the ground, and this big chunk of earth hits Zuko right in the chest, and he falls over. And the guy comes up to him to finish the job. And then we get the flashback of Zuko's mom waking him up in the middle of the night and saying that everything I have everything I ever done for you is because I love you, but you have to understand I have to go now. Please be strong. And you always remember that <clears throat> sorry, always remember what I told you. You're someone who cares a lot, loves a lot, and you always never you always fight even when it's hard to fight. I'm saying that wrong. Actually, let me pause it. This is what she said. That's who you are, Zuko. Someone who keeps fighting even though it's hard. That's that's what she said. I completely messed that up. I completely messed that up. I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. And then she leaves. And then Zuko's like, obviously she's looking. He's looking around for his mother, but he can't find her. And Zula's like, uh, Zula's. She is jacked up because. Zuko runs out because Zuko falls back to sleep after that and he wakes back up. He's like, where's... <laughs> um, Zuko runs into the next room. He's like, where's mom? Azula says, uh, nobody knows. She's just gone. And he goes, give me back my dagger. Oh, why? Who's going to make me? Mom. He snatches the dagger, runs outside, and then he sees his dad. And he goes, where is she? And she cries. I mean, and he doesn't say anything. And then we get that scene where it's the funeral of Philo, of the past Fire Lord, their grandfather. And like I said, they crown Ozai as the next Fire Lord. And he was like, we're going to respect his wishes to make him the next Fire Lord. I'm like, nah, dog. He had to kill him. <laughs> he had to kill him. Ain't no way. He like, you know, he, he had to kill his grand, He had to kill his dad, which is jacked up. And then we cut back to real time. And the dude with the two hammer comes up to Zuko to finish the job. Zuko wakes up and he, uses, he finally uses his fire bending. He does like a big fire, not a tornado, but a big fire twist and knocks the guy back. Which is pretty cool. Look at this. He goes to finish the job. Zuko finally wakes up and he does a big fire twist to knock him back, which is pretty cool. <laughs> he goes flying and he does try to do one more attack. Oh, yeah, that's, that's this was a cool shot. Y'all saw that? As soon as he woke up, I, don't, I can't saw the screen for too long, so let me uh, go back. <laughs> my friend. This was a pretty cool shot with the fire all around Zuko. And he's just standing up. Anyway, he tries to do one more attack until Zuko finally hits him with another fire blast and he hits the he hits like the town water hole thing and a bunch of rocks fall on him. He goes, Who are you? And I if I was Zuko I probably wouldn't say that, but as soon as he says, Who are you? Zuko just flat out says, you know, I'm Prince Zuko of the Fire Nation. My dad is Fire Lord Ozai and my mother was, you know, well, not princess, but you know my my dad is Philo Ozai, and my mother was Ursa, and the mother and the son of Ursa, that's her name. He puts his two blades away, and I'm the rightful you know king. Or the, I'm like not that. He says I'm the prince of the Fire Nation. My dad is Philo Ozai, my mom is Ursa, and he's the rightful ruler of the Fire Nation because he's like the next in line since he's the oldest. And then one old guy is like, wait a second, you know prince? I heard you got banished. You're not even part of the Fire Nation no more. And um. <sighs> I just hate this part, man. He walks over to the kid. Oh, that was after. Okay, I missed that. I missed that uh, line of eventual. Anyway, he walks over to the kid, right? And the mom is untying him. And he has the little dagger, right? And he goes, here, you should have this. Uh, he, I mean, here, you should have this. It's yours. He goes, no, I don't want it. I hate you. And the mom goes, don't take another step towards me. Get away. Go. And Zuko gets walked out of the town. And the whole town's like looking at him and all in disgust. I'm like, he just saved you from the soldiers, right? I mean, I think the only reason is one, because he's part of the Fire Nation. And the whole war is because of the Fire Nation. Okay. And two, he's literally the guy who started the war's son. He's Fire Lord Ozai's son. Because Zuko, he hasn't, because for the past two years, he's been looking for the Avatar just on the sea. He hasn't like... He hasn't, like, made a name for himself. Like, oh, that's Prince Zuko, the Fire Nation. He's taken down all these villages and these main villages. Like, you know, he doesn't have a reputation for taking down villages and, like, plundering places. Because he, he's been on the high seas for the past two years looking for Aang. So he hasn't done anything like that. So the only reason they, like, hate him is because he's obviously the Fire Nation, the son. I mean, the, you know, Lord Ozai's son. And he's part of the Fire Nation. And the whole point and the only reason of this war even started was because of the Fire Nation. But he just saved you guys, and you know, I hate you. Get away from me. 
I just, I was never so mad at an episode. Like, dog, what? <laughs> like, he just saved your town from these guys that have been punking you guys. And at least saw a tiny bit of gratitude. Like, a tiny bit. But no, as soon as he goes up to the boy to give him the, the dagger back, I hate you. Get away from me. And the mother's like, don't take another step. Like, what? I really hope in the comic, because I know there's like, there's these comic books that came out after the last episode of Avatar. Hopefully they met up again or something. After he like defeated the Fire Lord and everything, you know? Or I mean, but you, you know, helped him defeating the Fire Lord and everything, you know? I really hope so. Because I just, that really broke my heart. Because they were getting along so well, him and that family, and then now they just gone. I mean, two? I mean, maybe they would have still not liked you that much that you're part of the Fire Nation or a Firebender, but... I probably wouldn't have flat out said, I'm the son of the Fire Lord. Like, yeah, I, I probably maybe he doesn't want to be uh, ashamed of his heritage, even though his heritage is pretty bad. But despite that, he can still be a good person. I understand that. Me personally, <laughs> I, I wouldn't take that. Say, me personally, I, I wouldn't have said I was the son of the Fire Lord. I would just say I'm a firebender that's just wandering. I don't believe in the firebender's ideal, so I'm not a part of them. Uh, that's what I probably would have said. I probably wouldn't have said I'm the fire nation's son. <laughs> you know, I probably wouldn't have said any of that. But after that, that's the last of the episode. And Zuko just walks away. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So that's it. <laughs> I mean, that, oh, that, that's another episode. It sucks, man. I mean, that, man. I mean, he helped the town, but. <sighs> sucks ah that sucks bad so anyway like share, and subscribe i'll see you all later thank you all for watching and thank you all out there for being wonderful human beings and i'll see you guys next time bye, bye i always get that part mixed up i'm supposed to do the then bye bye but at least whatever that episode